right guys so what are we in now early September probably going to be the last video where I make habitats this year or happy tats because I've had a couple of people um, who want one and uh, that would be really good for saving rainforest because I should between the two be able to save an acre hopefully through the World Land Trust and I'm going to use this wood because look this year this is the first year and this is only eight months old this this habitat although the wood has been seasoning for a while absolute must if you've seen any of the other videos I've made I mentioned on there about seasoned wood so much better bees prefer it so I guess in the wild they will be finding old um, wood beetle boring holes and woodpecker holes stuff like that in pre-existing wood now, somebody's come out to say hello just when I was saying they're all gone I told you to stay in there um, yeah because they won't be wanting new wood because a it repairs and grows back it's wet and it's hard to work with if you like whereas seasoned wood is dry it's gone hard really good uh, substance to build your nest in so this first year for this one you can see how many holes we've got we've got leaf cutters here you've got osmia rufa here osmia bicornis mason bees you've got a bit of everything the smaller ones are going to be that you'll probably see some lighter holes as well there's a few species using that same wood is over here too this is two years old even better look i would say 60 percent of those have been used this year again a wide variety of, of different solitary bees this one here is a different type of wood but still good it's cross cut you cannot beat cross cut wood yes this is really successful this is uh, the ultimate one I made a few years ago brilliant it's got the overhang so there's a shadow on every level when the sun's overhead directly overhead you know 60 or 70 percent of holes bigger bees don't like it when it's and that wood is um, face on it's drilled face onto the wood not across across the, the the log if you like so yeah the smaller bees don't seem to have a preference but bigger bees 100% not one hole with uh, the larger osmia rufa mason bees whereas this one seems to be a good and even leaf cutters there's no leaf cutters in here either but leaf cutters here seem to love it cross cut and you can see that on these anything that's cross cut so over here you know these two brilliant this year look at that one full of leaf cutters that's fantastic that's almost every hole eight mil or, or higher has had a leaf cutter be in it so in that vein i'm going to be making two habitats in one now i'm going to try a different design where yes it's cross cut but it's going to be each one is going to be an l shape what it what that will do it will give the bees the opportunity to choose a different elevation so yeah that's the idea a little bit thinner so i'll be drilling right the way through a log look not I, i've had so many arguments they're not really arguments interesting conversations with people about the depth of the holes now in the wild you would not find every hole six inches long and and if a bee finds a hole they're going to make the most of it no matter what length it is obviously if it's too small they'll just move on these are three to four inches. Now, what they, the bee will do, it will plant the females at the back and the males, just not so many. There's no evidence to say that if a, a solitary bee finds a three inch hole, it will just plant males or just plant females. It, it's not silly. It's got, you know, millions of years of evolution and inherent understanding of what it needs to do. It's not thinking, but it knows inherently what to do and it will plant females at the back males at the front they come out first check the land the land i guess they're a little bit expendable you only really need one to survive so if it does have a cold snap they're going to fall um you know under that trap but the, the females obviously more important so they'll come out last of all so what i'll do is i'll finish cutting this off and then each bit will be cut in half and then that will form the L. It'll make sense in a minute. And then I'll, the, the other good thing about doing it like that is that the roof's cover, which is also vitally important to, for shade, so they don't overheat, is going to be 
covering far more of the habitat because it will go across that void between the two sides if you imagine an L shape. But in a minute you'll see. So I'll finish cutting this um, by hand. I don't like using, I could just get the chop saw out, get a multitude of, I've got a circular saw. There's loads of ways I could cut this, but you know, A, it's using energy and B, it's exercise and C, why not? If you're gonna make something, there's nothing feels as gratifying as making it with your own hands. So I'll finish cutting this now and then um, I'll come back and we'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But I, I think these are gonna make lovely habitats and that wood is fantastic. We already know that because it's uh, done well this year. So yeah, all in all, about an hour to hand cut this. This, this saw's had it. This is the same saw that hates me. It's the same saw that's left me a nice scar. But you know what? I thought, you know, you're not gonna win, saw. I'm gonna keep you and make the most out of you, which is what I've done. I don't like waste. Anyone who's watched me before knows that. And like I say, it does keep you fit. I did a thing for the World Land Trust uh, a few years ago where I did a thousand press-ups in two hours. It didn't sound like a lot, but they were military press-ups. And uh, stupidly, I thought it would be a good idea to start training four months before. So I was doing 500 a day, totally destroyed my neck, came to the day. Luckily, I'd already done a test run with my friend's video in it, so I'd already done it for charity, which was fantastic. But on the day, I, uh, when I was going to do it in front of a whole group of people, my neck had gone and I worked out whatever four months is of 500 a day plus the two times I did a thousand. Um, it's like something like 30,000 press ups I did or something ridiculous, I don't even know. But yeah, not a good idea. I'd have been better off going, right, I'll do it next week. I could have been ready. But anyway, doing this stuff yourself keeps you fit. And I'm 48, I'm no spring chicken, but I'm, I'd like to think I'm pretty strong and uh, I'm, I'm basically cutting a 14 inch log with a piece of metal because these teeth have had it but let's finish it off and then we'll we'll take it from there not bad actually where's the last bit oh, I think I've done a good job of that if I could find the last bit I think it's there perfect join so we'll cut through that I think it's that bit let's have a quick look yeah there it is so I'm gonna come from the other side actually so these are going to a gentleman who's a close friend of mine He's been watching me since the start and had loads of happy tats from me uh, in, the, in the Netherlands. We call him M. He's fantastic. He's, he's a really lovely guy. And he's got about five of these, or I forget now, maybe, maybe four in his garden. And they're all really doing well. And uh, he's asked for another one. And another lady's uh, approached me on Twitter. Actually, I don't know if it's a lady. Could be anyone. But they're getting one as well. And like I say, hopefully between the two, she'll be able to get an acre of rainforest um, out of it, which will be fantastic. That's going to offset a lot of my own carbon footprint, which is partially why I do this, really. So, not sure how long this is going to take. You can see I'm struggling with this. If you're sawing, don't struggle with it. That's when accidents happen. Get yourself a nice saw. Keep your hands out of the way. Let the saw do the work. Always hold a saw. Don't grip a saw and fight it, because that is when... Accident, this that didn't happen that way, it fell on my hand, but that's exactly when accidents will happen. Oh, it started to move. We've got some action, let's finish it off. Might have to do a bit of cleaning up here. But almost there, there we go. And there we go, that's not a bad cut. There's a lovely, see that hardwood, look. That's gonna be beautiful. Not, not so seasoned inside, but that won't take long. That's gonna, once I rub all that down, drill and rub it, and then it'll be cut down the middle, and this bit will be folded over and joined, and then top and bottom will have a roof or some legs at the bottom. And that way, in fact, you probably see it like this. You can't really see it, but if you imagine that sort of shape, only smaller, they'll have this elevation to choose from, or that one, depending on the type of bee. If they're a little bit late in the season or early, there could be loads of factors that affect their choice but they definitely do choose i know that from having hundreds of thousands over the years they definitely choose the fact that they like cross cut more is a there's a definite slew that way with bees so yeah they they're not as silly as you think so next step now shall i drill them and cut them in half or cut them in half and drill them i don't know let me give it some thought watch this space be back with you in a minute so 
three and a half hours drilling, they're both drilled. Just gonna put the last hole in, which is a bigger one, because I always like to do a little design of a bee flying out of a hole. Move it over here a bit. So we'll just get that one finished. The edges of this wood are very soft as you come out from the centre. So, so you have to be a little bit ginger with it. So all the way through with that one, that's it, lovely. So there you go, they're all drilled. Had to be quite quick because I blabbed on for so long earlier that I used up most of the 15 minutes allowance that I get on downloading YouTube videos. So next thing, cut them in half and put it all together and I'll come back to you. Well, there you go. About seven or eight hours each they took. Loads of work, but I think the most successful habitats I've made, these are gonna be awesome. They offer that choice of elevation in the cross-cut wood with a big roof. What more could you want? This is the back. So they're finished off nicely. Keep the weather right off, they will. It won't last forever, but they're gonna last a good few years. And at the front, there we go. I think they've come up beautiful, I'm really pleased. The only thing I'm gutted about is that I didn't make one for myself, but I will be now, because they look absolutely lovely and they'll sit in the corner of a person's garden perfectly. Thanks for watching guys, cheers.